Uh, thank you very much, Ros. Yes, indeed, that is something I can claim fame to. I've had one of those careers of 23 jobs in five different fields, and the airline industry was just one of those. So next time you're on a long flight, it's me you have to thank. <laughs> Uh, what makes, um, or, well, old schools should be art schools. Um, it's a fantastic, uh, idealistic, romantic, crazy kind of notion. And as a principal, I say, why ever not? Um, Ross Harley, in fact, described art schools as alive and a bit unruly. And I think that very well describes Bradfield. But it's the creative practice that happens in an art school that is the sort of thing that we've been looking at at Bradfield uh, and employing in our senior high school. Things like the design thinking process, uh, pro brainstorming, prototyping and testing, dedicated studio time instead of a 40 minute art period for art, te for art students to be able to create their major works. The ability to reflect deeply and singularly about a concept for a prolonged period of time much greater freedom of creative expression. And of course, the whole feedback and critique, the ability to take criticism and reflect on that criticism and incorporate it or not into work. So there's some of the principles of an art school that we take into um, our practice at Bradfield. We're a senior high school, we ha uh, have a vocational uh, focus, and so we are set up to be able to do some of this work. Um, we have an industry experience program on Fridays, which incorporates project work. So that's the vehicle, I suppose, that we were able to use to um, incorporate some of this art school thinking. And of course, we all know the context it's been spoken about in great detail today. Uh, I, came, I went straight into the creative industries from uh, high school in television and learnt very quickly that television doesn't stay the same for very long, nothing stays the same for very long, and I didn't have the grounding that I needed, so I guess that's why I've ended up where I am as principal of a high school, to help the new generation or the next generation understand the business side of things, understand their, uh, the focus that they need, the need for enterprise skills and general capabilities, once again, that we've heard a lot about today. And of course, helping students to find the relevance of the HSC. So this was the context that I guess um, I've got to pay homage to Kim Coford here, who's our Head of Design and Visual Arts. Design and Visual Arts drives the teaching and learning at Bradfield, and it's because of the progressive thinkers that we have in that faculty, uh, Lise, Claire, Jody, um, and of course Kim, uh, that has allowed us to take some pretty bold steps and some risks in the way that we approach education in, while delivering the, H the HSC. So, uh, oh, did I miss a, no? So, um, every Friday, every Year 11 student and every teacher in, is involved in Year 11 in a project as part of Vivid Ideas. Uh, we knew we needed a vehicle, a project that students could work on, and all the creativity that's inherent in the brand of Vivid um, was the perfect motivator. Per perfect motivator for teachers, perfect motivator for students to lift expectations of themselves and to uh, create something for a real audience. So no longer is this about an assessment task and a mark or a grade or a band six or any of those things. This is about end product. This is about collaboration and creating a multimodal public exhibition uh, which changes the intent of the artist. So every Friday, over 16 Fridays, and two dedicated project weeks, again, something that we take from the art school uh, practice, uh, students create and work together to, um, to build this exhibition. So in the two project weeks, the first one is at the end of term one, and that's where we uh, students present their project progress to over 300 people, so uh, industry, parents, community, and they present their, their, their concepts to date and they receive feedback and then of course have to take that away and reflect on that feedback. Uh, the project weeks allow them deep immersion, deep uh, amounts of studio time, rehearsal time for music and drama and performance and so on uh, that they wouldn't normally get, in, as I said, in their 20 minute or 40 minute class time. And uh, then, of course, they need to reflect and incorporate that feedback. Students apply for roles on the project. So uh, part of the philosophy is we're preparing them for work and further study. So they all interview, they choose a job and they interview for that job. And we have people from industry and parents who are obviously part of industry too come in and interview for them for those positions. Um, 
students have to find their place on the project. Students have to, and teachers for that matter, have to find their place on the project, which makes this quite unique. Um, the maths teacher has to find his place on the project, which is sometimes challenging. Um, and so once they've applied for their jobs, they're assigned to these project teams and then they start work on their projects. So the banner that we uh, put, uh, put this under for Vivid is the new creative. So it's about showcasing new creative talent, emerging creative talent. Uh, and then we have a theme. This year it was Hidden in Plain View based on Paul Irish's book, which has just been shortlisted for the Prime, Minister, uh, Prime Minister's Literary Award. Uh, this was telling Sydney's hidden stories. That was the, the premise behind it. And some of the uh, exhibitions were transformed landscapes, abandoned landscapes, uh, hidden voices, anonymous connections. And these two wonderful um, artists here, Michaela and Jolie, composed 10 original songs that were part of a sound cloud. They performed live on the day, but also uh, their soundtrack was part of uh, installation and exhibition. We had, oh, there's Paul Irish there with his book. We have um, artisan markets as part of the event. Once again, students need to know how to commercialise their art. So we have a, a digital fabric printer that allows us to create merchandise, so tea towels and tote bags and uh, a whole range of uh, things. And students um, are encouraged to sell their own works as part of that artisan market. We also involve other schools, so if there are any teachers here today from schools who would like to be involved in our next year's event, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. This year we had Bosley Park High and Endeavour who worked with us on a zines project. Uh, I think there's a... Uh, worked on the, the zines project here and we'd be really, really happy because we're, I think we're planning a large collaborative artwork, Kim, is that right? I think there's one's, uh, one on textiles, one on photography, so really happy if uh, anyone would like to be involved. Uh, that's part of the incredible mural that was worked on for, uh, by some of the artists. Now, this isn't just about student work either. Teachers were part, they were artists on the mural. So it was teachers and students collaborating together on a project. One of the artists, I think the one in the middle there, said, oh, this is absolutely not my style, this type of mural. But she worked on it and she understood what it was to collaborate. Uh, this is uh, mapping the transformed landscape of Sydney, honouring its Aboriginal heritage as well as its urban landscape of today. So they're just some of the creative outputs, some of the creative responses that uh, the students have. Uh, this was a part of a wonderful um, LGBTQI. We have a strong LGB um, presence at the school. And so this was part of the uh, coming out series where they spoke to people um, and had their coming out stories. It was a beautiful rainbow uh, presentation of monitors. Uh, so as you can see, a very wide variety of creative responses. One of the most profound things, we reach out to industry, we have masterclasses come in, we had Tim Chappell, uh, Paul Bianco, a sound engineer, they come in and do masterclasses with students and work with students throughout the, uh, the whole uh, project. And we go out into community, so we reach out to um, whatever community is around. We had some wonderful Aboriginal work this year as well with Claire. Uh, one of the things is the work we do with aged care residents. So the students, so we have poets, illustrators, painters, musicians, go out to visit the aged care homes and hear the stories of the residents there. And then they're charged with that very delicate uh, task of retelling that story. And uh, so we had films and documentaries and uh, sonnets and all sorts of creative responses. Then the aged care residents and their families come to be part of the exhibition. And I can't begin to tell you the number of tears and profound magical moments that uh, resulted from that project. Uh, handling this delicate material, it was quite, um, that's probably one of the highlights I think over the last few years. So with creative practice at its core, this is how we can build general capabilities. Because week after week, we are putting students in very uncomfortable positions. We are putting teachers in very uncomfortable positions. Um, I'm just smiling at Claire, who was a little uncomfortable this year, weren't you, <laughs> for a moment. Um, this is how you develop these skills. We know this because this is what, this is what happens in the workplace. This is what happened when I was in television. Uh, you know, the, the ability to resolve creative conflict. And there was a great deal of it. it. The project was alive and it was very unruly and quite chaotic at times. But this is where students learn self-awareness and self-efficacy and they build confidence. They build incredible connections with their families. 
So the parents are very much a part of this project. And when I first came to Bradfield, the parents were so far removed from our school. Now they are very much a part of our school. Students build strong connection with the college, obviously with industry and community. They go out to work placement following this, and so they build connections within the project and then go out and, and uh, form, uh, for work placement. Importantly, they build a connection with their future self. That's one of our musicians. <laughs> so with creative arts as the driver, we have a greater, more unified culture at Bradfield. This year, we had a 71% increase in the number of major works submitted for the HSC. Now, that's an outcome because the students are now familiar with the design thinking process. They understand all of those processes that need to go into completing a major work. And that's been one of the most significant outcomes that we've found. Um, we've also had some incredible new teaching practices. Advanced English, studying Othello, met visual arts and created wearable art. So not only did we have a wonderful exhibition with some fantastic uh, creative responses to uh, Othello, but the English students understood so much more about the concepts that they were studying. They engaged so much more deeply with the text and many of them practised art for the very first time because we were working together. So... That's what I believe all schools should be art schools. Thank you. Thank you.